so much. That was lovely. Our next reader is Cindy Hauser. Cindy's chapbook, Cindy's chapbook, Burning Number Five, Power Plant Poems, was named co-winner of the 2014 Blue Horse Press Poetry Chapbook Contest. Her work has been nominated for the Best of the Net Award and the Pushcart Prize, and has recently appeared in Borderlands Texas Poetry Review, San Pedro River Review, Red River Review, The Enigmatic. Thank you. The Enigmatist, Watermelon Isotope, and In Bearing the Mask, Southwestern Persona Poems, which she edited with Scott Wiggerman of Dos Gatos Press. Thank you. So given our, our uh, lovely storm today, I chose a couple of storm poems to start out with. This is called Storm Theory. Skeins of clouds unwinding their weight. We run for cover, though our skin was built to withstand such drumming. Cumulus yearning, tropical dreams, banana, palm frond. Now the wind pushes up, green strands wave gray, demented. Hallway dark like a tunnel. If there are ghosts here, we said, then the lights went out. That cinched it. <laughs> um, I had the good fortune about a month ago to have a tropical storm named after me. <laughs> so this poem is uh, kind of inspired by that. And there's a couple of words in the middle of the poem that are actually, um, there are, they are uh, body parts of a Portuguese man of war, uh, gastrozoid and pneumatophore. So we hear those in the middle of the poem. Tropical storm. How my storm got on the radar is a matter of speculation. Under the surface of some body rip tide. Tens of meters of blue threads wave and the waves so churn you can't see the imminence of stinging. Each polyp does its part. Gastrozoid and metaphor venom-studded tentacle. If there's one stranded man of war on the beach, there are many in the water. Forecasters trace the patterns of pressure, energy trapped in thermal wells, swirling the evident calm eye, the imminence of release. So next I'll read um, one poem from Burning Number Five. Uh, and I chose this one because it's, um, it's located in the summer while running a power plant. So it's called Until the Average. The beast is all steam breath and metal intestines. Her attendants climb the clattering scaffold of stairs to rope off the heat of leaky refractory. Recent rains have soaked past lagging into insulation and steam hisses up. The boiler skin bleeds rust. She isn't young anymore. Her hydrogen and brittle boiler tubes are porous as old bones. Cracks spider from st steam drain entries on the wall of the condenser. Breakers wear tags like bandages, burned up bearings, the pump that just gave up. She smells of turban oil and astringent treated steam. Her worn bearing seals drip into bent metal drain troughs away from sources of ignition. The operators coax her along. Last week, they bypassed number 14 feed water heater when three tubes gave way. They're gentle with her now bring up the pressure slow. Please, they ask, just a little longer. In a few weeks, the summer will be over. Mm -hmm. Next poem is called Siren Hours. The part of you that's Ulysses sways listless against the mast, forgets sleep for song, neither right side nor left against the sheet any difference. Here is a thing you chose, like the seat on the bus where the cold vent blows right on you, the handrail you touched, the words you spoke as thoughtless as a virus. 
It's like the tickle in your throat that explodes to leave you teary and wretched after you struggled and struggled to contain it. That thought that rests in your mind soon as the light's gone out. Strategy and plan that lash themselves to memory, siren hours from the night. You pretend these voices are other than they are. Forget you know how to swim in the red clouds that would rise behind your eyelids. If only you could see them. If only you could stop your ears from the song that you yourself are singing. Mm -hmm. And my last poem is called Pendulum. After the election, when neo-Nazis seek heiled in hotel ballrooms and New York subway windows were blackened with swastikas and remarks about Jews and ovens, some nights I'd wake at 3 a.m. rehearsing the logic to switch I'd use to sway my senator if only I could get him to listen. Some nights remember the kindness of strangers when we marry. All those straight people genuinely happy for us. The rabbi who discounted his fee because you had to wait so long. My aunt and cousins, my sister, my father-in-law, and I feel the situation wasn't so dire. Though my other sister tells me God through prayer can heal impure thoughts. And the Westboro Baptists still protest under God hates fags while politician and pundit debate where the people like me should exist. And I find myself thinking about the Jews of Germany, that they were assimilated, that they had fought for their country alongside their neighbors, their kindred, who they never imagined would betray them. And I think how fickle we are, how frail. And then I remember the 300 Jews of Assisi gap hidden between sanctuary and crypt, to be crypt, the bogus documents printed for each one, the German officer who heard their muffled footsteps between the breaths of his daily prayers and kept his silence, how not a single one of them was taken, and how in the subway the passengers took out tissue and hand sanitizer and erased the marks of hatred. 